One thing that may surprise you is that Intel's shutdown of its NUC mini PC division was sudden and unexpected. NUC team was already working on the next NUC mini PC before the doors were permanently shut. And almost exactly one year later from the closure, I managed to find out what really happened at Computex. But that's a story for another day. So, ASUS took over Intel's NUC business, rebranded it, and here we have the actual final Intel designed effort codenamed Revel Canyon, aka ASUS NUC 14 Pro. Oh, and this one's got a plus at the end of it. At least it doesn't have AI. No, it has AI too. Look what you've done, Jensen. Anyway, if you were looking for a more substantial redesign of the classic 4x4 inch box, like I'd been pushing for the last couple of years, you're going to be happy, as here it is. So what's different over the previous generation? Quite a lot actually. We'll go over it right after this message. Have you lost a product key on your PC? Ezus Keyfinder can recover and back up all product keys on your system. With this app, you can display product keys of Windows, Office, Adobe products, and more. You can also find Wi-Fi codes, browser accounts, and passwords. Try it for free with a link in the video description. The ASUS NUC 14 Pro Plus brings back that famous aluminium alloy case NUC fans have come to love over the years. And now, the Mini has widened to accommodate the new cooler. It also no longer comes with a plastic top lid or plastic front panel like previous generations. The only plastic on this one is underneath to help get that wireless signal through. How much bigger is it than the original? I'm glad you asked. Here's the old and the new spanning over 10 years of models in between. The NUC 14 Pro Plus is the first mini to come across my desk with Intel's flagship Core Ultra 9 185H processor. This Media Lake CPU features 16 cores, 22 threads, and Intel's top arc integrated graphics. I couldn't find this mini on Amazon.com or on Newegg, so we'll have to go by the ASUS eStore, which has this model starting from $860 US for the bare bones and $1390 for a 1TB 32GB config with Windows 11 Home. Pricey. And for those dollars, you might not even get a power cord in your region. Awesome. Well, on the bright side, at least the NUC 3 year warranty that Intel used to provide carries on over. Anyway, in the fancy box design of this loaned review unit, there was a power cord included. The monitor mount is now plastic instead of metal, which I think is a downgrade, but all the accessories like the power supply match the color scheme of the NUC, which is a nice touch. Oh, and it's a pretty compact power supply considering it's 150 watts. The ports have changed a bit since NUC 13. There's a USB Type-C on the front, which is 20 gigabit, and three of the USB Type-A ports are 10 gigabit with one being USB 2. Also, you'll find two USB-C ports on the back with both of them being Thunderbolt 4. Together with a dual HDMI 2.1 TMDS, you've got support for four displays natively. Strangely, the 3.5mm audio jack has been thrown out, which some will miss. A 2.5 gigabit LAN jack and Wi-Fi 6C takes care of networking. Although I have to point out that NUCs were known for pushing the bleeding edge, so a Wi-Fi 7 card would have been nice to see here first. Even though Intel often use metal cases for their mini PCs, they had solved the wireless range issue from um, day one. But we've seen some brands struggle to get a decent range with a metal case due to lack of testing. But that's something I do in my videos by checking each mini's Bluetooth range and the ASUS NUC 14 Pro Plus was able to sustain music on my audio speaker without dropouts up to 4.5 meters or around 15 feet with a wall in between. One of the better results with a metal case. Okay then, let's see what's changed inside the NUC. The four screws used every previous generation are now gone. Instead, you've got a locking mechanism. You'll need to twist the circular lock, flip the other two locks, and push the side out. Pull up on the cooler, and there's access to the memory and storage drives. Pretty impressive bit of engineering here. I'll try not to geek out. So, with a pre-build, the M.2 Gen 4 2280 slot will be occupied with your OS drive, but you have the option of adding an M.2 2242 NVMe for extra storage, which tops out at Gen 3 speeds. The pre-build comes with Windows 11 Home, and my unit thankfully wasn't filled with bloatware. 
But to be able to test Ubuntu off a of USB, I had to disable fastboot and then enable the ability to boot off a USB drive in the BIOS. Once I had it fired up and running, Ubuntu worked just fine. Originally, when I was supposed to receive an ASUS NUC for review, I was sent the lowest Core i3-100U barebones model by accident, which is actually still a Raptor X CPU. I was asked not to review it, but I did test it for most benchmarks before returning it. Those curious in how the i3 performs can look over the charts and find it Where's Wally style. Oh look, there he is. The ASUS NUC 14 Pro Plus reigns supreme in the single core Cinebench test, finally coming out slightly ahead of the NUC 13 Pro. There's an optional performance fan profile in the BIOS that consistently showed positive results, so I'm adding it as a second score for those who don't care about fan noise. Yep, all five of you. Relax, the five of you don't need to get upset. The increased fan profile yields under 2%, so it's nothing to get giggity over. Whoa, look at that. In multi-core, we have a new wiener. It's over 19,000. Again, increasing the fan profile saw a slight consistent improvement. Yep, the scores here are an average of multiple runs. Geekbench disagrees on the single core performance crown for the NUC 14 Pro Plus, but does agree on multi-core and the difference between the fan profiles isn't worth mentioning. The king of H.264 video encoding has been crowned. With the higher fan profile, there was only a tiny improvement since the test isn't very long. And the NUC14 beats AMD's best result recorded so far in AV1 encoding. Especially in hardware encoding, where it shaves off almost a quarter of the time it takes to complete the task. Again, small gain with the higher fan profile. It's cool to see Intel also taking the crown in the graphics benchmark, both in DX11 and DX12 where Intel completely dominates. But will these 3D Mark numbers translate with the same type of wins in actual games against AMD's finest? We'll check that shortly. The included Gen 4 NVMe drive has fast sequential read speeds around the 7000 megabytes a second mark, while the write is pretty decent too. This is one of the faster drives I've seen bundled with a mini pre-build. Alright, let's hit the games. According to 3 d Mark, the Ultra 9 should be on par or slightly ahead in DX11 games and quite a bit better in DX12 against AMD's Radeon 780M graphics. So let's pit the NUC against the B-Link Sir 8 I reviewed which has the Ryzen 8845HS. Counter-Strike 2 is a win for AMD. And another in League of Legends. Valorant is a win for the NUC 14 Pro Plus, which isn't surprising for this CPU heavy title. And both perform around the same with Dota 2. So that's two losses, a win, and a draw. But I prefer exact side-by-side -side comparisons. So let's try some DirectX 12 games which 3D Mark Time Spy showed favoring Intel Arc. All tests are done with no upscaling or frame generation, just native rendering for the most accurate result. Well, so much for the benchmark win. It's the opposite here. Intel's ARC graphics can't compete with AMD's best. Same with Robocop. These numbers may be low, but that makes each frame matter even more. Two or three extra frames can be double digit percentage gains on the other side. And again, the same with Hellblade 2. So, three strikes and you're out. I've seen enough. Clearly, Radeon 780M is the better choice for this task. Of course, if 
you want to seriously game on this Mini, you can use the Thunderbolt 4 port with an eGPU enclosure. Here, I'm testing my Razer Core X with an RTX 3070 to play at higher detail and resolutions. Alright, let's see how it holds up in emulation with the integrated graphics. The NUC 14 gets a win with this Wii U emulation test, and with the PS3 test, they're about the same. So, not a bad result. Right, I'm doing this next test just to go through the motions. There's no chance the Ultra 9 won't handle my 4K video project when a low-powered i7-1255U has managed to do it just fine as well. The NUC 14 Pro Plus has plenty of grunt for 4K video editing, but you know what? An inbuilt SD card reader would have been nice. If you've owned a NUC from a recent generation, you'll recognize this BIOS screen. There are some features in the advanced tab, then onboard devices that might be of interest. Otherwise, the majority of settings are found in power, performance and cooling, where you can set the fan mode from the presets or customize various settings as you like, including power limits, fan profiles, and a whole heap of other settings such as auto power on and wake on LAN. Idle power draw on the NUC is great. All the power saving features kick in to give one of the lowest results. But we have another new wiener on the power draw front. 148 watts maximum. Um, congrats? Intel is going for the brute force method. I like it. At least it makes the cooling in this NUC seem all the more impressive. That being said, throwing all 16 cores under load has the CPU max out at 104C every time on either fan profile and thermal throttling kicks in. Just another day in mini PC land. But hey, it's a chart topper either way. Fan noise depends on which profile you use. I found performance to be very obnoxious with lots of fan noise rapidly ramping up and down instead of smooth curves and the loudest max noise recorded yet. The standard mode behaves very reasonably being almost the same as previous gen units, but having to deal with almost 50% more watts. Either way, it's not quite under load. Intel's NUC was the OG for cooling M.2 drives, and this latest edition also has no problem keeping it cool. Alright. So it's about time to wrap this one up. The ASUS NUC 14 Pro Plus tops the performance charts in nearly everything thanks to the Core Ultra 9 and the new larger redesign helps this power hungry chip to work properly. Any cooling system that manages to do a pretty good job with 150 watts in such a small space deserves a mention. The metal case is back and it's beautiful, as is the 3 year warranty. Port selection is very impressive. This is the first Mini I've seen around this size to feature 7 USB ports, with 3 of them being USB-C and 2 of those being Thunderbolt 4. Firmware and driver updates should be good on this, unlike the Chinese brands, which are a hit and miss. But Intel's winning strategy is to pump the CPU with lots of juice to get the performance up. Power draw is high under load. Despite what the benchmarks say, Arc integrated graphics are still behind AMD, by up to double digit percentages when tested on pure graphics grunt in various cases. No Wi-Fi 7 and HDMI TMDS instead of FRL is disappointing as is the lack of an audio jack, which has been on every previous NUC generation. And of course, all the engineering, testing and even the fancy box it comes in adds up. There's a hefty price tag here with this NUC being the most expensive yet. Sure. I know previous generations topped out at i7s, but the point still stands. NUX haven't been quite mini PCs for a long while, and this one has to deal with some serious heat. The performance mode is way too much for me, but the standard mode I can live with. Alright, so for a couple of generations now, I thought the original NUX needed to reinvent itself to remain relevant, and I think Intel, I mean ASUS, mostly succeeded with the new design. It's a pretty cool piece of tech, showcasing an impressive engineering effort. But what I think isn't important. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the ASUS NUC 14 Pro Plus. 
last Intel Design Mini PC. And if you prefer a small form factor PC with much much more graphics performance, there is the ASUS ROG NUC, which I've already reviewed, and you can find the review right here. Or if you're interested in the history of the Intel NUC, I made a mini documentary you can check out right here. Cheers!